live your life the way that you want to live your life. Ladies and gentlemen, as I speak to you right now, if you had 90 days to live, how many of you will make some radical changes in your life? And most people raise their hands. And then you take a poll. You know what the majority of them will say? I will quit my job. Hmm. Why? Because that's not them. Yeah. They're not doing something that's them. You spend 40 to 60 hours a week doing something that's not you. Yeah. That's stressful. But if you're doing something that's you, that's your passion. And so when you realize that we have a choice to accept life as it is yep. or be an active force for good to decide, I don't want to just survive. This is not me. What it takes to survive and what it takes to live, those are two totally different things. Yeah. And you got to be willing to work for that. A lot of people are afraid of that four-letter word. Willingness, mm -hmm. W, the willingness to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. O, ownership of your life, taking full responsibility for where you are. George Bernard Shaw said that, that people that make in his life, they look around for the circumstances they want and if they can't find them, they create them. The R stands for willingness to reinvent yourself. To that, that in order for a man to gain his life, he must lose his life. So you've got to be willing to die to who you are now, to give birth to who you are to become. And the K stands for kindred spirits. You've got to come out from among people who don't have goals, who don't have dreams. People rub off on you. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. Academy Award winner Sidney Poitier said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. Either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? Wow. And so if people are willing to do the work, whosoever will, let him come. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. Boom. <laughs> a lot of them aren't as talented as you are. A lot of them aren't as talented. And when we're thinking about... I'm not going to say they're not talented. Okay. They didn't just exercise the gift. Exercise that gift. We're always it. blessed with talents. Every last one of you have a talent. But it's on you to develop and exercise and go get it. It's on you. That's not on mama. That's not on daddy. That's not on the friend. That's not on the homie. That's on you to go get it. So all of you got something inside of you that is just screaming to get out. And it's about time that you bring it out. 21. That's it. That's it. So, Coach, uh, you know, there's a lot of human specimens out there that are athletes. I'm thinking about... MJ, I'm thinking about Bo Jackson. We interviewed him uh, last year at the uh, awesome. AT&T Stadium. Usain Bolt, human specimen, physical specimen. LeBron James, specimen. And you're a specimen. So when we're looking at talent, when does talent stop until work ethic takes over to get to the next level of domination? Well, I, I like work ethic and I like ta talent, but I also love character. Character is going to keep you where you want to go longer than you really need to stay. Um, work ethic is unbelievable. Talent is as well. But sooner or later, it's something that's inside of you just has to want it. You have to need it. You, you, you got to go at it like it's that next breath that you got to take, that you, you, nobody can stop you. And, and the closer you get to it, you're going to have naysayers. You're going to have doubters. You're going to have people that's close to you. That even in the crib, which are laying beside of you that don't believe in you. I know I stepped on somebody's toes right there, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> that's what I came here to do. But it's up to you to wipe the tears out your eyes and go get it. Because my motto when I was seven years old is I believe. I got to Jackson State and I started saying I believe and they thought it was something new. I've been believing for a long time and I'm not gonna ever stop. Now it's about time for you to look to that person next to you and say I believe. I believe, I mean, you gotta feel it. You gotta embed it, you gotta embody it. Don't just say it with your neck all slanted. You gotta put your neck up right and say, I believe. I mean, I, I believe, that's right. Without a shadow of a doubt, you got to believe. You got to want it. 
because everything you want is going to be something in front of it that's going to keep you away from it. So you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to roll your sleeves up. You're going to have to put Vaseline on your face, ladies. Take your earrings off. You know, take your lace front off, baby. You're going to have to go get it. You're going to have to go get it. One of my favorite books is Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl. And he said he was in the Nazi German concentration camps. He said the Jews that survived the inexpressible cruelties of Nazism had some power greater than themselves that they believed in or some movement that they bought into or some family member that they were determined to see again. And what it boiled down to, he said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. If you got a reason that drives you. My reason was I had made a commitment. I was going to buy my mother a home. And nothing was going to turn me around. I was going to make that happen. That was not some wish. My brothers and sisters, they didn't share it. They thought I was crazy. But that became my reason for being. I faced a lot of rejections. And I just saw it as a part of the process that you have to roll with the punches because I was in this place with Paul Robinson who said, here I stand, for I can do no other. And I was determined that I was going to find a way through speaking to earn enough money that I'd be available to my mother to take care of her who was suffering from breast cancer. I promised her when I was a kid, I said, you'll never go into a nursing home. She used to work in nursing homes. And she always said she never wanted to go into a nursing home. I said, I promise you, that will not be your destiny. And when my sister called me and said, Leslie, are you sitting down? I asked, what's wrong with mama? I just got reelected to the higher legislature and they had appointed me to the chairmanship of the education committee and the human resource committee. And she said, mama has breast cancer. I say, I'll be there tomorrow. She said, but you just got elected. I said, listen to me. I enjoy politics, but I love mama. And I promised her I'll be there. And she said, Leslie, they have a lot of good nursing homes in Dade County. I say, please, don't touch her. I'll be there tomorrow. I caught a plane the next morning, and i never forget ringing the doorbell. And a friend of hers, her name is Mildred, was there. And she came to the door, and she said, oh, my God, Mamie, Leslie's here. And I could hear my mother say, I knew he would come. Hmm. I knew he would come. Mildred unpacked those box, boxes. He's here. I knew he would come. You have to have something that drives you. When others give up and surrender and throw in the towel, something that can cause you to reach a place within yourself where you say, I don't feel nowhere is tied. I'm going to get it done. That makes you unstoppable. I was there. I took care of her until she left here, bought her home. Got to find something that pulls you into the future. It's a stand that you decide to take with your life. If there's one thing you can tell anybody on what to do with their money, what would it be? Uh, what to do with your money and what would it be? You got to bet on you. 
It's so funny that you believe in others. You would bet on others. You would support others. You would be there for others. You would even lie at times for others. But when it comes to you, you take a darn back seat. I don't understand it. Uh, I'm not a gambler. I don't play with money of that nature. When I go to casinos, I don't even frequent down there. They don't even give me free room because they know I ain't spending no money, okay? <laughs> but every now and then, I go put about $100 on 21 black. That's just an analogy. He got it, you didn't. That just meaning, that was my numbers, ladies, in football. That just mean I'm going to bet on me. I said, but I really came from Fort Myers then. I said, I'm going a, I'm to a bet on me. I'm going to believe in me because I know what I got inside me. I'm going to bet on me regardless of what you think. I'm going to be there for me regardless if you there or not. I see me, I know what I'm capable of, I know my shortcomings, I know what I would do under pressure, I know what I won't do under pressure. I've introduced myself to me probably over two decades ago and I know me. And I'd be darned if I'm not gonna bet on me. I don't know you like that, I don't know you under pressure, I love you, I love what you accomplished, I adore you, I love the way you dress, I love that gown you got on, baby, I love those pants and those jeans, I love the way you flowed your outfit, but I don't know you. But I do know me, and I be darned. I know I got some improvement to do, I'm not perfect, but baby, I'm present. That's what I tell my kids, I'm not a perfect father, but I'm present. When you look around, I'm gonna be there, but I'm gonna bet on me every darn time and I promise you I'm going to stick to it no matter what and I'm going to win. So my advice to you is bet on yourself. If we, if we look at the difference between what I do and what ministers do, ministers preach the gospel about Jesus. I preach the gospel that Jesus preached. <laughs> they sell the messenger, I sell his message. Boom. When they demanded of the Jewish carpenter when the kingdom of God shall come, he said, he didn't talk about brick and mortar, some building, the kingdom of God cometh not by observation. They shall say, it's neither low there, low here. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. You can't have a kingdom without a king. Kings rule. You must master the king in you. Most of us have been programmed to fail. Most of us are being manipulated by the media, by computers. Studies indicate that most people look at their phone over 400 times a day. They have given up control, the real estate of their mind, the kingdom within, to commercial advertising. They've been programmed to be fans, to be spectators, as opposed to being co-creators and how they're going to live their lives. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, the future belonged to those who created. We were born to create. And so this time where we are, this place where we are, mm -hmm. people should not be focused on the television set and what's going on in the Ukraine and my heart goes out to them and my prayers and my support for them. But they should be focused on what kind of person must I become that will help me to learn how to turn adversity to my advantage, because life is going to always be challenging. Mm -hmm. Think it not strange that you're faced to fiery furnaces of this world. You will, not you might, you will have tribulations. It's a part of the process. And so our goal is, is to master your kingdom, that, that we have to go within, as we say that you don't live life as it is, you live life as you are. And so when, if we train our children how to live their lives from the inside out as opposed to the outside in, we can reduce the dropout rate, the suicide rate, the unexplained violent behavior, people mm. fighting over toilet paper, yeah. 
in a grocery store or fighting over a parking spot, that's somebody that's not in their right mind. And so people are breaking down to a very large extent. But the people that will make it through this place where we are, there's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. And Shakespeare said, the four dear Brutus is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. If, if people take the time, a minimum of two to three times a day, to get still, to get quiet, to go within, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth thee, and listen to the whispering of your soul. What am I supposed to do next? As opposed to listening to the world. Yeah. What you tune into, you turn into. So in this space, we have to focus on how to begin to elevate ourselves above the culture above all the stuff that we see and focus on the whole vision of what we want to manifest. My favorite book says, I'll give you all your eyes can see. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. You might run over here, but you'll limp back. Don't mess with me. <laughs> when you're looking at your career, I'm sure in addition to your victories and success, your championships, you also had tough and difficult losses. Yes. What is the loss that comes out to you right now? It's probably one of your toughest losses in your career, whether uh, baseball or football. My money in divorce court twice. Okay. Probably my <laughs> football or baseball, divorce. It's probably, it's probably my toughest loss. It was a tough fault case, but you know, I lost some. Man, God gave it back to me in the end. But no, 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 straight up, straight up. Honestly, that was my toughest loss. Just, just going through the nonsense of, of life, understanding that um, someone you lay with, you produce children with, is gonna come out to be a darn war about something you worked your butt off for. And that's traumatic. But guess what? Sooner or later, you gotta wipe your tears, put on a new suit, take a good shower, and get back out there and go get it. Okay? It's, it's a lot of you right now. You need to thank God that he left. You need to thank God that she played you. You need to thank God that they did you that way. You need to thank God that they walked away. You need to thank God that you got strong enough where you finally said, no, you ain't doing me like that no more. And you need to thank God that it happened because if it hadn't happened, you wouldn't be as strong. You wouldn't be as tough. You wouldn't be as resilient. You wouldn't be as provocative as you are now. So some things we got to thank God for because God is trying to move that out the way so he can usher you in and blessing you to a whole new beginning. And that's why I am. You know, I'm 54 years old, looking like 35, 37, somewhere like that, you know. And, and it's, it's like a whole new chapter. You know, I, I've been prime time, then I cut the time off, you know, then I was just prime, and now I'm coach prime. It's a whole new chapter, and guess what? <laughs> I'm still winning. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Still winning. God, I'm still winning. By the way, in the audience right now, raise your hand if you've ever been through a divorce or family court. Two. Right? Two. There it is. There it is. Bye. <laughs> It's tough, it's tough because you think, you think so, you're almost like, like, it hurts you as a man, as a provider, it hurts you emotionally, financially. I mean. That, it's a death, but they're still walking around. That, that's really what it sure, is. It's yeah. like losing somebody, yeah. but they're still walking around. You can see it. <laughs> Dang, I see you died real good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see that. Forgot about that. <laughs> we have to continue to educate people on the reality that you can make a difference. Politics is a part of it, but it's not the absolute. That we have to be actively engaged in being current in terms of our knowledge and skills because the, whoever's in the White House, it doesn't matter if you don't have the skill set and the mindset to turn adversity to your advantage or to find a way to get your piece of the pie. That's the name of the game. Yeah. That there's a big pie out here and everybody want a piece of it, but everybody's not going to get a piece of it because the road to life is straight and narrow. 
and, and few there be that find it because few there be that are willing to do the inner work. Few there be that are willing to upgrade their skills and their knowledge. Few there be that will face rejections and no's day in and day out and decide it's not over until I win. That most people, they allow themselves to be broken. They will surrender. But you have got to have the kind of mindset no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. You're not going to stop me. I have a goal, I have a dream, and my stopping or giving up because of the failures, because of the, the rejections, that's a non-negotiable hmm. no. I'm coming at you from another angle and I'm not gonna stop till I get through. We all have that in us. We don't know how strong we are until we have to be strong. Yeah. And so we are not taught in school resiliency. We're not taught how to handle rejection. That's why so many kids are committing suicide, being bullied, because they have a limited, weak sense of self. Dr. Um, Martin Silliman, who wrote the, the book of, called Psycho-Cybernetics, who discovered mm -hmm. self-image, that we need to have a curriculum that builds a person's sense of identity. Once your life has a sense of identity, that gives your life a sense of purpose. And once your life has a sense of purpose, that gives your life a sense of direction. And so Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. When you know why you're here and what you're supposed to do with your life because of that time that you've taken, to ask yourself some questions of why am I here? What's the meaning of my life? Mark Twain said, the two most important days in your life, the day that you're born and the day that you realize why you're born. Most of us don't take the time to get quiet and get still. Most people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65. Most people don't put their minds around the reality that life is God's gift to us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. So we pulled up this YouTube uh, video that your top 50 plays. We won't go through the whole thing, but let's take a look at some of your top plays. Two, two All right, here we go. Can we stop it? I, 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 I want to stop it. I don't want you to clap because I'm going to say something that you're not going to believe. Those aren't my top plays. Let, let me tell you why. Because, see, my top plays happened at practice when no one was looking. My, my top plays happened in Fort Myers, Florida, when none of you knew anything about me. My top plays happened when there was no camera there. See, those are the plays you just caught on camera. Those weren't my top plays because I practiced like I played, so when I played, it would be practice. <laughs> Yeah, you, you were supposed to clap right there because that was straight Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, get up to practice place. So there's somebody out there right now, the light ain't on you, but keep making plays. Nobody's talking about you, but keep making plays. That's right. I know your sales numbers aren't where your friend is, but keep making plays. I, I know nobody's talking about you, and you're not on the leaderboard right now, but baby, keep making plays. Coach, were you, with all that, were you ever a selfish player? I don't know what selfish is when you're playing a team sport. But even at a team sport, you, it was about yeah. my stats, my thing. No, it wasn't about me, but the better th I did, the better we were. So you could see it as selfishness, you could see it as braggadocious, um, you could see it as individualism, but the better you are, the better it's going to be for your company, the better it's going to be for your team, the better it's going to be for your family, the better it's going to be for your kids, the better it's going to be for your siblings. So you got to do your thing. I, I, I love team, but in the middle of Dion, there's an I. In the middle of the win, there's an I. In the middle of prime, there's an I. So I knew I had to do my job to make it easy for everybody else. Because you're, you're the living embodiment. I mean, you're literally a living legend who's destroyed a lot of reasons why you shouldn't succeed, why you shouldn't get ahead. You know, there, mm -hmm. there's people out there right now, like, what, what am I supposed to do? They feel helpless. 
They feel isolated. They feel But they powerless. don't feel that in a vacuum. See, we, we were born to succeed. You're made in the likeness and image of God. It doesn't get any better than that. That's right. We were born to succeed. We've been given with authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. But we've been programmed to fail. And so I say, particularly when I'm in church, even though we are made in the likeness and image of God, and been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. We will never exercise authority and dominion over our lives until we exercise authority and dominion over what we are not. Hmm. <laughs> that we have bought into an image that has been sold to us Dr. Carter G. Woodson said it best. He said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. He said, if you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. So our goal and objective in helping people to begin to plug into this economy is to deal with the pandemic that we presently have, but also the virus of mediocrity, HIV, oh. hood-infected virus, AIDS, <laughs> addiction to incarceration, and death syndrome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.